Hello and welcome. So in this video, we're going to be talking about what a monotonic sequence is and, and also the monotone sequence theorem. This is sometimes called a monotone convergence theorem as well, but the name doesn't really matter. It's the same thing. So before we can talk about what a monotonic sequence is, we have to talk about what an increasing sequence is and a decreasing sequence is. That's very simple. So let me just write these down. So increasing and decreasing. Okay, so there's nothing too special about this. An increasing sequence is a sequence that, well, literally just increases. So in mathematical terms, this is just saying that the term before the next term. So in other words, the term before the one, the, the one term after. So in mathematical terms, an plus one is after an. So Increasing just says that the term after is bigger is bigger than the term before. So that's not that's nothing too earth shattering or hard. And decreasing is just the other way around. It's just saying that the term after is less than the term before. So in other words, an is bigger than an plus one. So the term after is less than the term before for all n bigger than or equal to one. Okay, so there's nothing too crazy about that. Okay, so what does it mean for something to be monotonic? So monotonic just means that the sequence is either increasing or decreasing. So monotonic. So the sequence is increasing. So increasing. Or it's decreasing. So nothing too crazy about that. So it's either increasing or decreasing. So it's either going up or it's going down. But it has to be happening all the time. It can't suddenly just go up or then suddenly go down like that. It has to be happening continuously. Okay, so the next thing we need to talk about is called a bounded sequence. So that's nothing too crazy either. And you might be able to reason out, reason out what it means from just the name. So suppose I have two numbers, m and little m. So let me just write that down. So suppose we have two numbers. So two numbers. M, so little m, and capital M. So in this situation, bounded just means that the sequence is between those two values. So in other words, bounded just implies that M is less than or equal to my sequence which is less than or equal to capital M. So an is always between two fixed values. So there's absolutely nothing too crazy about that, and that should make sense. And the last topic we have to cover is the monotone sequence term. And by the way, I will be doing examples on this and the previous video, but not in this, top, but not in this video, just because I want to do examples specifically in another video, just to kind of differentiate between the two kind of topics. So we will do examples just in another video. So the monotone sequence theorem. Okay. So this theorem will make some sense and I'll draw it out to kind of illustrate what's going on, which, but it should kind of make sense. So this one just says every monotonic, so it's increasing or decreasing. So every monotonic bounded sequence is convergent. And this should kind of make sense, to be honest. I'm, uh, so if a sequence is always increasing or decreasing and it's bounded above or below at some point, well, that means if I go to infinity, it's going to reach that point at some point. So what does that, what does that me mean, though? Like, how does it kind of look like? So let's just draw it out. So suppose I have an axis. And let's say it's bounded above. So there's an upper bound on this. So it's reaching capital M. Okay, so let's just draw this out. So it's bounded above by M. So it can go below, uh, above M. So this is kind of its limit. And it's monotonic. So it's increasing or decreasing. So let's say it's increasing. So my sequence, let's say, starts at zero and it's increasing. 
So it goes up, 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 and so on. So it's going to keep going up forever. So every monotonic sequ a bounded sequence is convergent. So suppose I call this my sequence. So this sequence right there, let's call that AN. So and AN goes from zero to infinity. So when the AN goes all the way to infinity, so when AN approaches infinity, or more appropriately, the limit as n approaches infinity of an well that's actually going to equal m and that should kind of make sense that's what this theorem is saying it says that if i start at some value and it's always monotonic so it's increasing and decreasing and it's bounded well of course it's going to reach m eventually it's just going to take it's just going to get there at infinity and of course that should make sense it's kind of the same thing if you go downwards so if I draw another axis, and once again, if I have my bound downwards this time, so kind of like this. So let's say this here is my little m, and let's say I start here, and I go downwards, kind of like this. Well, of course, in this situation, the, as I take my limit to infinity, it's going to reach little m. So that should say capital M, just to kind of emphasize my point. And this limit, the limit as n approaches infinity of the sequence in this situation, well, that's going to equal little m. And again, that should make sense. Now, what if the, why does it have to be bounded? Well, the problem is if there wasn't a bound, it would just decrease forever. It would just kind of keep going forever and ever. And that's not going to be bounded. That's just and that's not going to converge as a result so it's just going to keep going for our forever and ever okay why does it have to be monotonic well the reason if it, the reason is if it wasn't monotonic that would mean that it's neither increasing nor decreasing across all points so it kind of look like this or something like that or whatever it doesn't really tend to a fixed value there's no kind of behavior to the sequence it just kind of oscillates back and forth in some way so because it doesn't really tend to any fixed value it doesn't really converge so the monotonic sequence term fails so that's why it has to be both bounded and monotonic otherwise the sequence is just not going to converge and then subsequently the theorem will you know fail okay so hopefully that was a good illustration as to why the theorem works and with that, I will see you in the next video where we'll cover a lot of examples of sequences and hopefully it will kind of drill home the point as to how this actually works. Okay, so I will see you all in the, in the next video. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And hopefully if this video helped you, please feel free to share the video as well. Thank you. See you then.